Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want you to know I received a complaint this morning. They were very quick to come to me and show me the scriptures and say, how come we're having a short sermon? That wasn't a complaint. Oh, I wasn't. A <laughs> now, now you know who did it. <laughs> you know who did it. Um, Ruth, when my notes are short, what happens? Long. When my notes are very short, what happens? <laughs> uh, I've always used my notes in order to be able to narrow down the things that I want to say. It, uh, one of the things that came to my mind, I, I, I worked all week long on a sermon that I had to discard yesterday. I just put, could not get it in my mind, could not get it to flow. But because of the time change, I was going to preach on God's timetable. In fact, I told several people I was going to do that. But, uh, the biggest problem with that, I had so many thoughts in my mind, I couldn't narrow it down to one sermon. <laughs> so that, that was the thought there. So I, uh, another thought that I was working on for several weeks now is coming close to the time of the resurrection, uh, where we celebrate the resurrection. Uh, I, I got thinking about it. Christians ought to be celebrating. I mean, we are the happiest people in the world, or should be. Now, I know we have problems. I mean, uh, uh, I can talk to any one of you on a private one-to-one -one basis, and I can listen to almost for several hours the problems that you have in your life. We all have that. Uh, I, I have in my, I follow Facebook. I, I don't participate too much, except I might share once in a while. And I, I, I see all kinds of problems that are coming about as a result of life in general. Uh, Sheila Johnson, for instance, is a personal friend of mine, uh, and a beautiful piano player. She could be a concert piano player if she wanted to, and I just be fortunate to be able to have her play. I would give anything to have her up front of here playing for us. Uh, she's a good woman. But we need, we have, to have problems. Uh, how many of us have lost loved ones? I told Ruth that in this past week that the loneliness and the agony of being by myself without a wife is becoming harder and harder for me to bear. It doesn't heal with time. You just adjust to it. I think those of you that lost loved ones will say the same thing. But I want you to think about Christians and our celebration. And we're going to be talking about various ways we can celebrate. Now, I'm going to talk this morning about the challenge that is before us to celebrate. And there's two passages of Scripture, two verses of Scripture in the book of Galatians that Paul wrote that I want to share with you even before I begin. In Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And the other one is Galatians, the sixth chapter, the 14th verse. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. I, I, I know there's a lot of interpretations that you can give to those two verses. But one of the things that I firmly believe that these two verses are saying that Paul celebrates his relationship to Christ. I am crucified to the world. I live for Christ. And there are many passages that we can claim and read that indicate the Paul's celebration of the life that he's living for Jesus Christ. Then you read in the 12th chapter of the uh, book of 1st, 2nd Corinthians, I'm sorry, of the things that Paul suffered. <clears throat> being stoned, being in the deep, and we go on and on and on and talk about We are nearing a time where the world is going to be talking about, quote, 
Easter. And by the way, I don't like the term Easter. And uh, my kids will tell you that I've said a long time ago. I don't like the term because it's in reference to a false God, not to Jesus Christ. The God is the spring to be shared. But we're coming to a time where we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we celebrate that every Sunday. <clears throat> we meet on the first day of the week because Jesus Christ rose on the first day of the week. We celebrate his resurrection. And it's that resurrection that we celebrate every Sunday that I, I want to talk to you about. If it were not for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I don't think we would have Christianity. I, I, I firmly believe that. You might disagree with me. That's just an opinion. But there are four things that I think the resurrection of Jesus Christ challenged us to do. Number one, because we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, uh, we, we celebrate the empty cross. I, I have a friend, or had a friend, he's passed away and gone to his reward now. I, I tell you, the man always amazed me. He had open heart surgery, a valve replaced, and the next Saturday he was out mowing the grass in his yard. So I mean, that's the kind of man he was. But he had old country ways. I, I believe, if I remember right, again, I'm getting forgetful. He was born and raised in one of the older countries. His last name was Srenecki. Now, you tell me what country that is. I think it's Poland, but I'm not sure. But Stanley was raised in the Roman Catholic Church. And when his family came to the United States and he got involved with the coal business in the hills of Kentucky, He had a friend that led him to Christ. And one of the things that he could not stand was to see a cross with Jesus still on it. He says, I don't worship a Savior that is dead. I worship a Savior that is alive. I remember one Sunday while I was preaching there, the Lookout magazine, which we passed out here had on its cover a, a picture of Jesus Christ dying and the whole air, air emphasis of the book look up that week was on the death of Jesus Christ. So they had Christ on the cross to be able to introduce that. He would not allow the church to pass out that look out simply because they had that picture of Christ on the cross. I serve a risen Savior. I can remember him saying that. And what about the empty cross? We, 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 we realize that uh, by the fact that the cross is empty, that, that was where Jesus Christ purchased our redemption. We realize that by, by uh, the cross, that's where Jesus Christ took our sins. He blotted out the handwriting of the law that was against us. Colossians 2, 14, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us which was contrary to us because, and took it away, knowing it to the cross. The fact that Jesus Christ died and was taken down from the cross, it is an emphasis of the idea that God loves us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we need to remember that empty cross is a sign of Jesus Christ dying. When I served the church in Etowah, one of the elders of the church down there did not like to see the cross in the church. And I can remember somebody telling him one time, this is Lewis, the whole idea of Christianity is that Christ died for us. He said, yeah, but God gave us that memorial. It's not the cross, it's the Lord's Supper. And he says, when we have a cross in the church, it takes away from the observance of the Lord's Supper. He might have a point. He might have a point. The second thing that we see as we look to the resurrection, we see an empty tomb. <laughs> I, 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 many years ago when I was in college, I, I used to work uh, in the steel mills of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, by the way, I had sulfuric acid splashed on my face so that I didn't have to shave for a while. Maybe that would have been better for me right here. 
because I did cut myself off shape. But while I worked there, there was a man that worked there that was a Muslim. And he was one that he would not talk to anybody. He, at uh, lunchtime, he would go off by himself. Uh, he worked hard. He did a good job. That's why they kept him. But he worked hard. But he was a loner. And I did my best while I was working this strip mill in Hazel, Hazelwood, Pennsylvania. 